In today's video, we're going to talk about the Ford SVO. This was a vehicle that Ford marketed to the sports car enthusiast. It was to compete against BMW, Audi, Porsche, maybe even Ferrari. They spent a ton of money on research and development. They also spent a ton of money on marketing. And yet this car that they had hoped to sell 10,000 of a year sold less than 10,000 over its three-year run. So why did the SVO fail? What happened? Why did this car not get accepted? We're going to cover that at the end of the video. But for now, let's dig deep into what the SVO actually was. And then we'll try to answer that question for you. From Ford Special Vehicle Operations, the new Mustang SVO with a 175 horsepower turbocharged engine. Coney gas shocks, Goodyear NCT tires, four-wheel disc brakes, five speeds, articulated driving seats. The new Mustang SVO, the machine, speaks for itself. Have you driven the best-built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? In the fall of 1981, Ford formed a division that could oversee both the company's racing program and the production of a high-performance street vehicle. The division was called the Special Vehicle Operations Department. The public came to know them simply as SVO. SVO was led by Michael Cranefuss, who previously headed the racing arm of Ford of Europe. Tasked with developing something that was both American and competent enough to compete with the European sports cars of the day, the team began tuning the Mustang as it seemed to be the most obvious choice for a high-performance vehicle. Ford President Donald Peterson stated, and I quote here, our most definitive effort on the American scene to put together the finest we have in the way of a smaller displacement, higher revving, turbocharged kind of touring car. SVO engineers opted to pass over the 5-liter V8 fitted to the Mustang GT in favor of a detuned version of the turbocharged 2.3-liter Lima inline four-cylinder racing engine. This was derived from the regular production engines originally used in the Pinto and Ford Mustang II. The use of a four-cylinder engine helped greatly with weight distribution due to the engine being installed perpendicular and behind the front axle. Compared to the V8, the 2.3-liter SVO engine was 150 pounds lighter. All of this greatly improved handling. These are the men who built Mustang SVO, who made the engine turbocharged and intercooled. The shocks, gas-filled conies, the tires, Goodyear NCTs, who put disc brakes on all four wheels because they think more about precision and discipline and zero to 50 than they do about nine to five. They are Ford Special Vehicle Operations, and this is Mustang SVO. Have you driven the best-built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? The 1984 SVO Mustang was introduced at a 1983 press event in Northern California's Napa and Sonoma counties. The event included track time at Sears Point Raceway. The SVO was seen as a bridge to future turbocharged performance vehicles. The engine was fitted with an Airy Search T03 turbo, an advanced computer-controlled fuel injection system, and an air-to-air -air intercooler. It developed peak power of 175 horsepower at 4,400 RPM and 210 foot-pounds of torque at 3,000 RPM. In addition, a fuel-grade switch was added to the dash, allowing the driver to adjust the vehicle's spark advance depending on whether premium or standard fuel grade was being used. The computer-controlled system limited boost pressure to 10 PSI below 2,500 RPM and increased it to 14 PSI at faster engine speeds. A factory-installed Hurst shifter was made standard to improve feel and quickness. The SVO featured several modifications over previous Mustangs. The front suspension geometry was modified. A 15 to 1 ratio power assisted rack and pinion steering system replaced the standard system. A limited slip 3.45 to 1 traction lock rear axle was added. For the first time, a Mustang had ventilated four wheel disc brakes. The foot pedals were designed to aid in heel and toe shifting, and a six shock Coney suspension system featured specifically tuned adjustable front struts, rear shocks, and horizontal rear dampeners. The Coney shocks had setups for cross-country, GT, and competition. The lateral rear shocks served to eliminate axle hop. Five lug 16 by 7 inch aluminum wheels with P225 50R16 were standard tires. The interior was only available in charcoal gray with either leather or cloth seats. Standard features included adjustable sports seats with lumbar supports, a leather-wrapped tilt steering wheel, shift lever, and emergency brake handle. Only six options were available. Air conditioning, a cassette tape player, power door locks and windows, a flip-up sunroof, and leather 
seat trim. The speedometer was marked at 85 miles per hour per federal regulations. However, the SVO team included one without numerals that went up to 140 miles per hour. The exterior had a unique front grille and hood that was only used on the SVO. The front end was designed to accept both sealed beam headlamps and the forthcoming aerodynamic lamps, and the hood had a functional scoop for the intercooler. The SVO had thinner side moldings, smoother sail panels behind the rear quarter windows, small rear wheel spats, and a biplane spoiler. Only four colors were available for 1984. Black, metallic, which was silver, medium canyon red, and dark charcoal metallic. Car and driver called the SVO a driver's car. They set a 0-60 to 60 time of 7.5 seconds and ran the quarter mile in 15.5 seconds at 90 miles per hour. Ford had intended to limit production and only sell 10,000 SVOs in 1984. However, total production topped out at 4,508 cars. Ford consultant Jackie Stewart talks about the four-cylinder turbo. The four-cylinder turbo has staged a revolution. To find an eight-cylinder Grand Prix engine today, you almost have to come to a museum. As for road cars, like the Mustang SVO, the intercooled four-cylinder turbo can actually give four cylinders the power of eight, if you ask for it. The Mustang SVO is a big step forward. Have you driven the best-built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? The early 1985 SVOs were identical to the 1984 model. However, Ford rolled out an improved half-year revision. The 1985.5 Mustang SVO saw Ford increase horsepower to 205. This was thanks to fine-tuning and the addition of a new water cooling system. The vehicle's standard BorgWarner T5 five-speed mounted transmission was updated as well. It received revised gearing to match the also new 3.73 rear end gear ratio. An optional competition prep package deleted many of the optional features and stripped away approximately 100 pounds of curb weight from the car. Only 40 such equipped cars were built in 1985. Ford tightened the shock valving in 1985 in order to stiffen the suspension, and the new aero headlamps were fitted. That dropped the car's drag coefficient slightly to 0.38. All of this did little to help sales, however, as only 1,854 SVO Mustangs were sold in 1985. The 1986 SVO model saw a drop in horsepower to 200. Ford once again tightened the shock valving, and the SVO was no longer front and center in Mustang marketing. It was listed as an also available, with most commercial spots highlighting the car after the standard Mustang and the GT. Ford sold only 3,382 Mustang SVOs in 1986. So why couldn't Ford sell 10,000 SVOs a year? You've seen the car as a competent performer. Well, this is going to be conjecture on my part, but I think if you look into it, you probably agree. And if you don't, please let me know. Firstly, the SVO was $6,000 more than a Mustang GT. And that $6,000 back then, that's almost 38% of the cost of the car. So it was a very expensive car. Two, the Mustang community had grown to love a V8. That's what a Mustang was. It was a muscle car through the 60s and into the early 70s. And in 1979 and 80, Ford announced that the boss was back because they put the 302 back in the car, and that's what people wanted. They weren't ready for a four-cylinder handling machine, which the SVO really was. Also, the V8 GT was quicker in a straight line. That didn't help either. So the SVOs never really hit that target, although the SVO team continued on. The SVO engine was taken out of the Mustang and put into the 87 Turbo Coupe. Another thing about the Turbo Coupe, this price of one that's pretty loaded up was around $14,000 in 1987, so it was still $2,000 less than the SVO. Oh, and by the way, Ford sold 60,000 Turbo Coupes in 87 and 88. If you'd like to learn more about the Turbo Coupe, check out this video over here. I go through the history of those cars and what that SVO engine did ultimately to the car. That's it for now. Like I said, if you don't agree, leave a comment down below. I try to read them all when I can. Thanks for watching, and until next time, we'll see you.